Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Overseas Living Unlimited webinar, and thank you for being here today. My name is Sophia. I'm the editorial director at Live and Invest Overseas, and we have with us once again, I think for the third or fourth time, maybe fifth time, we've got Sasha Savinov, who um, will be speaking with us today about Oaxaca. So thank you, Sasha, for being here. <music> Yeah, sure thing. Happy to be back for, I think it is round five. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have to go back and count them out. But um, Okay, so Mexico is obviously, it's a huge country. And I'll admit for my own um, sake, I, I didn't know where Oaxaca was. So mm -hmm. you talk about that and also, um, I guess, the difference between Oaxaca and Oaxaca State. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, to be clear, there is a state of Oaxaca in Mexico, and then there's uh, the city, Oaxaca City, which is the capital of that state. So uh, it's basically kind of south central Mexico, um, and it's it's about let's say to give a point of reference um, for Mexico City, it takes about four hours by bus or or car to get to Oaxaca, or it's a quick um, hour long flight or so, and then from other destinations, like from Puerto Vallarta or from Cancun. Um, I think connections are pretty limited with direct flights. Uh, I haven't been able to travel directly between, you know, the coast and Oaxaca. Usually you're connecting in, in Mexico City. Um, there are some direct flights with the U.S. I think they're pretty limited, too. I mentioned it in the article. I think it's maybe Houston and L.A., um, I, I feel like as it becomes more popular and um, people start to catch on to the magic of Oaxaca, they will start to offer more direct connections. But for, for the moment, it's kind of one of those slightly hard to reach places. <laughs> you got to put in a little bit of effort to get there. Maybe that's why it's um, still so authentic and, you know, different to Puerto Vallarta, Playa Carmen, because it takes a little bit of an extra leg there to get to. Um, yeah. places. So... You outlined, you know, all the many things there are to do in this town, and it sounds like there's a lot of outdoor stuff available. So what would you say, um, you know, a typical day in Oaxaca, what would you get up to? Or what are the things that are on offer there for people to get into if they're, if they're interested? Well, if you're into hiking and, um, you know, getting up there in the mountains, you have lots of opportunities for that because it's really surrounded by by mountains um so i'm i'm really into that personally you know that's that's what i would want to do with uh with a free day i'd want to get out in the mountains you know in the morning and go for a hike and come back to the city in the afternoon um there's, there's some really amazing places to visit near oaxaca there's one place called hierve el agua I'll type the name out there it, it's like petrified waterfalls and it it, you got to see it to believe it. It's, it's, it's wild. It's these, you know, these pools out there in the hills and you can walk around them. I'm pretty sure you could get in and kind of swim. I mean, you don't really swim. You're just kind of hanging out in the water, but you just have this insane view all around you and you can see these petrified waterfalls, which I never even knew that was a thing. Um, mm -hmm. That's a really popular place to go. You know, a lot of, um, all the travel agents or hostels or whatever there are all running trips there and that's just one of many you know unique places that you can visit within an hour outside the city there's the ruins of uh, monte alban which are super cool because you can still climb up and down those which you can't really do at uh, chichen itza or um yeah I, a lot of the ruins in the mayan riviera they're starting to limit that which is understandable because they get far more visitors and you have to preserve them. But at Monte Alban, you can climb up and down the ruins. And again, you just have these amazing views all around you and you can look back and see the city. So those are two of the coolest places that are within reach. And then I know there are hiking groups that, that are going out on trips. So if you do end up relocating there and you're not just doing the touristy thing, I think it's pretty easy to link up with people and get out there, have some outdoor adventures. Then in the city, it's got, like I said, some amazing colonial architecture. So going to visit the many churches and squares and parks in Oaxaca, 
is really nice. Some of them have museums that you can check out, which are super cheap. I, I don't remember the exact cost, but you know, you won't bat an eye. It's a, it's a couple dollars maybe. Um, so that's a lot of fun. It's also a very artistic place. So if you're into the arts and these indigenous handicrafts and stuff like that, there's lots of galleries and markets you can peruse. Um, you also just see, you know, in some of the parks and squares, vendors selling stuff that you might want to check out. It's just super colorful. You know, it's 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 a real treat for the eyes walking around Oaxaca. A lot of pastel colored um, buildings and um, nice people. And then the food, like you said, I mean, we can probably do a deeper dive into the food, but <laughs> my perfect day in Oaxaca definitely involves uh, a plate of mole and, you know, for, for dinner and then probably a little bit of mezcal in the evening and going out and soaking up the, the nightlife. People there like to have fun. It's a very fun place. What about medical care? I see as a question. Generally speaking, from what I, I read from other expats, I didn't, I couldn't really find any, any negatives there. You know, it's affordable, it's available. There's English speaking doctors. And some people will get some kind of emergency insurance, right? And then keep some kind of insurance at home. So I think it really depends on your situation. But, it, you know, at a basic level, things like going to see a, a doctor and getting a basic prescription anywhere in Mexico, it's super cheap. You know, to go to those local clinics, you do need at least a bit of Spanish or, you know, Google Translate or a friend. But you're usually paying like 50 pesos or $2.50 to, you know, see a doc and get a quick diagnosis and they'll write you a prescription right there. They're usually right next to the pharmacy. You'll have these little doctor's offices right next to a pharmacy. So boom, you go see the doc, pay a few bucks, get your prescription, fill it right there. Prescription drugs are so much cheaper. Stuff like, um, you know, we've, we've gotten sick on our travels or, you know, I remember my wife had like a throat infection one time or something and something that would cost so much here where we would say, hey, you know what, just let it pass in mm -hmm. Mexico. It's like, no, you go see the doctor, you get the medicine, you pay a few bucks and you, and you take care of yourself. It's much easier to and cheaper to deal with that kind of stuff. Right. And just paying out of pocket um, for, yeah. for that stuff. I know some expats keep like an emergency fund with mm -hmm. uh, you know, a significant amount in it so yeah. that if they have a serious problem, um, they can have that dealt with. Um, yeah. And just pay out of pocket for the minor stuff, like you're saying. It sounds like also in Oaxaca, um, you know, being at four hours from Mexico City, it's it's close enough that you could have. Um, I know in Mexico City you could have any possible ailment. That yeah, you need. definitely. You could have it it's, dealt with there, if not in Oaxaca City itself. Right, and and I should also mention if you like go through the process of becoming a permanent resident in Mexico as. Many of my um, old, older neighbors in Puerto Vallarta had done. Um, a lot of them signed up for the IMSS, which is basically the you know national healthcare plan there, and they had pretty good things to say. Again, you need a little bit of patience and a little bit of Spanish, but for the cost, you know, it's a good, it's a good option if you become a, a resident in Mexico. I'd highly encourage anyone who is thinking about moving to Mexico, you know, full time as long as you can meet those requirements. And I, I think for people of retirement age, if you can show sufficient savings, it's quite easy. For someone like me, I'm still working and I'm a freelancer. So my income's up and down and left and right. And I'm still loving the nomad life. So I don't really need to be there more than six months at a time, right? I don't, I haven't um, pursued that avenue yet, but um, it's definitely something to consider because you can get hooked up into the national healthcare system. And it's, I don't remember how much, but super cheap. Like you just pay an annual premium, I think. And yeah, a lot of things are covered under that. So. Yep. Um, you said it costs about 10,000 pesos a year for someone in their sixties, yeah. which you I think is about um, like 600. That's uh, like $500 uh, or give or take. It's been pretty consistently $1, 20 pesos the last couple of years. Sometimes it's 19, sometimes it's 21. Okay, so about five hundred dollars then. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, that is really affordable, definitely. Yeah. Um, and just speaking, we're speaking generally about cost of stuff. I would, I mean, I'm gonna say definitely. <laughs> you're coming from the United States. This is a place where you can lower your cost of living. Mm -hmm. um, 
for sure. Absolutely. And also, perhaps in the context of Mexico, if we're comparing to say, um, you know, the places that we've been comparing it to this whole time, PV, Puerto Vallarta, uh, that is Mazatlan, Playa, yeah, all those places. Playa del Carmen, um, it's going to be cheaper than those places as well. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, I would say so for sure. Um, just you know, not being on the coast, not being a super popular destination, not being a place like Cancun that has flights coming in from Canada, the U.S., Europe, you know, all these tourists coming in in Oaxaca, just generally everything is a bit cheaper. And, you know, that's already on top of Mexico just being cheaper than it is, in, you know, up north to begin with. So, um, yeah, you'll, you'll pay less for rent there than you would in, in a place like PV, even just, you know, going out for for you know, a quick bite to eat. I notice it's a bit cheaper there than it is uh, on the beach, which, you know, shouldn't be that surprising um, because it's more of a, you know, local city than a, than a tourist destination. It is getting more and more popular for sure. You know, definitely. And it, yeah. if anyone wants to read the article, we do have a very interesting interview with Ian, who's a super nice guy who runs a travel agency there. And he had some good insights into the changing, um, kind of seen in Oaxaca with, with more and more expats coming in. So, um, yeah, I, I hope it, it, I, I think it will retain its, you know, unique charm. Um, so I just hope that for, for anyone who, who considers living there, um, you know, keep that in mind that as it becomes more popular, there might be some, you know, backlash with, with, with locals. So just like being nice, being understanding, trying to speak Spanish, those things go a long way, you know, like Definitely. I said, people are real patient with you. If you're, you know, a gringo trying to speak Spanish because a lot of them are also not using their native tongue. So it's kind of, yeah, I, I felt like it, it's, it's not that hard to get around. If, if you speak a decent amount of Spanish, some people try to speak a little bit of English. So you give meet, and take. Meet you halfway a little meet, bit. Exactly. Um, I guess, I was going to ask you about the drawbacks about this town and you're kind of just touching on them right there where, yeah. you know, growing popularity might lead to it changing um, the vibe, which is what people like about it in the first place. It's kind of a catch 22 situation. Are there any other drawbacks um, you, you can think of as, as Oaxaca as a, as a retirement destination? Um, yeah, I guess, first of all, that, you know, what we've been talking about, it's not, super well connected to yeah. the US. So if you're someone who doesn't like having layovers and those long travel days and you're still going back to the US or wherever to visit family, that could be a drawback because until they do add more routes, you're probably having to do that unless you're coming from Dallas, Houston or or LA. So so there's that. Um I guess, you know, the mobility issue, it seems like Oaxaca's better than other places and they're actually trying to improve it but it is still you know a mexican town with cobblestone streets and sometimes uneven sidewalks and there's hills you know so getting getting around can be an issue but um i think a lot of people manage by choosing their residence carefully right someplace that's flat <laughs> um and then you know figuring out where you can go in the city and how you get there and how easy it is to get around. Um, for some people, they might like the fact that there's not a whole lot going on, right? Like, like I said, it's not a big city, even though it's the capital city of the state of Oaxaca. So for me, that's kind of like a drawback that I love, like big city energy. I lived in Beijing before. Tokyo is probably my favorite city ever. I go to Chicago as often as I can. Um, so, you know, compared to like Mexico City or Guadalajara, there's not nearly as much going on in Oaxaca as far as cultural offerings and such. Um, but there is plenty to do. You, you, I don't think you'll have a problem like being bored there. <laughs> you know, it's a vibrant town, um, especially if you're into the great outdoors and the arts um, and just, I mean, just eating. Jeez, like, <laughs> um I was going to say, I, I don't know, maybe if you're, if you're someone who's looking for, yeah, more like diversity of options for going out to eat and drink, you're not going to quite find them in, in Oaxaca like you would in PV or Playa, you know, um, I 
really stuck to the markets, the street food, the mezcal bars personally, because I was trying to get the local flavor. But, you know, if I stayed there a longer term and I wanted like a decent pasta dinner or like some Indian curry, I don't really know how easy it is to find, you know, stuff like that at the moment. Um, so that might be a drawback if you're not really that into mole and mezcal. <laughs> But I think those things are awesome. I even want to like make t-shirts that say mole and mezcal. <laughs> you should do it. Well, I got one that says tacos and tequila already. So I may as well, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, for anyone who doesn't know, um, what what is it? All uh, mezcal is tequila, but not all tequila is mezcal. Something like that. I might have mixed it up. <laughs> tequila is only made from blue agave plants. Mezcal can be made from any kind uh, or ver various kinds of agave so it has a different taste um but if you're going to oaxaca you're going to have to try it so <laughs> yeah you'll learn all about so it you realize you'll Today. realize soon enough there's lots of good places to go out and try it like i said it's a fun town um there's uh lots of cool places to go out at night grab a drink see some music meet people it's, or just hang out in the square you know, if you've got kids, it's a very family friendly atmosphere in front of the big church. They'll have clowns and people doing balloon animals and kids running around while adults, you know, hang out and chat. And yeah, it's a really cool place. You know, it's it's making me think right now how I should probably start looking at places to stay there in flights if we're really going to go through with this this fall. 